Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to continue on and actually film the final review of my Brewdog catch up that I've been doing for you since I've been here at home in Scotland and unfortunately this is the third and final part of the IPA is Dead 2015 series that I've reviewed for you. My bottle of the Mandarina Bavaria unfortunately smashed so I can't review this that one for you but today we're going to have a look at the Ella which is a nice fruity Australian hop. I've already reviewed the Chinook and the Pioneer so I hope you enjoyed this those reviews so this one should be quite an interesting one for us to do as well and I have to give a shout out to Harry Meadows at Blue Nose Beer Reviews for providing me with these beers and um, I was really struggling to actually find them in Scotland and he managed to dig them up for me in England and brought them up to me so a big thank you to Harry at Blue Nose Beer Reviews for that go and check out the link to his channel in the description below but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual websites are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other brew dog reviews there's maybe about 75 or so of those now so do check them out if you're particularly interested in brew dog beer and there's all the usual social media facebook twitter and on tap so please follow me on there your support would be much appreciated if you want to see more beer reviews just subscribe to the channel and please do let me know the beers that you'd like to see me review on here it's always interesting to get suggestions from you guys the viewers and there's been some pretty awesome ones so far so do keep them coming but anyway to tell you about brew dog quickly so as I've told you many a time, Brewdog is the love child of two guys from Aberdeen, James Waugh and Martin Dickey, and the company was founded back in 2007 with their first brewery being a very small one in the Keswick Industrial Estate in Fraserburgh in the very northeast corner of Scotland, right on the tip of the monster's nose as I always like to say, but more recently they've moved their main brewing operation to their purpose-built new and very shiny facility in Ellen, which is closer to the city of Aberdeen, and of course they're actually working on opening up their second brewery over in Columbus, Ohio in America. These guys are known for being a very experimental craft brewery, particularly for their strong beers as well. They've actually held the title of world's strongest beer on three separate occasions. That was the Tactical Nuclear Penguin, the Sink the Bismarck and the End of History. You can still get the first two of those, but the End of History was a limited brew. And for me, Brewdog really stand out when it comes to these higher ABV beers. Now, they say that their trademark style really is the Pale Ale, the IPA, and the Double IPA, and they do produce some very good beers in that style, but for me, Brewdog also produces some pretty awesome stouts and Imperial stouts. I really like those beers, but overall, Brewdog are a pretty damn good brewery, I have to admit, and they're largely inspired by the American craft brewing renaissance. They quite openly cite Stone Brewing Company as a big influence on their style of brewing, and if you actually try some of the Stone Brewing beers, you'll really see the influence in things like Punk IPA and Jackhammer. That's really where Brewdog really like to sort of trademark themselves, I guess you could say. But these days they're very well known for their very successful chain of brew pubs. These started in 2010 with their home bar in Aberdeen. Maybe might have actually been 2009, I can't quite remember, but I was there on the very first night that it opened and I don't remember much of the night, but it was pretty cool. So go and visit the home bar in Aberdeen. They also have a bar on site at the brewery these days, but now they actually have brew pubs all over the UK. They've got several international sites as well. Roppongi in Japan, there's two in Finland, two in Sweden, one in Norway, I think there's one in Germany opening soon, Belgium. France, Barcelona as well, there's two in, two or three in Italy actually and there's I think one in Brazil too so Brewdog bars are all over the place do go and check them out. They actually opened one up in my hometown very recently too which was really quite cool. I was in there the other week but there's lots of opportunity for you to drink Brewdog beers these days but one of the most interesting things about this company is how they've actually grown and this was through their Equity for Punk scheme. Now this is a shareholding program where fans of the brewery like you and I can actually buy in and buy shares of the brewery and and really the brewery just used this to buy tanks and fund the bars and all of these sort of infrastructure developments for the brewery. It's a very interesting model and really it's made Brewdog the world's first crowdfunded brewery and they've just released a book on that in fact so you can go on the website and have a bit more of a read about that yourself but they've been very successful and these days they're actually the largest independently owned Scottish craft brewery and I think James Watt and Martin Dickey still own somewhere in the region of 70% of the company. The rest of it of course has gone to different shareholders which is pretty interesting but they've got their regular range of beers there's the core range which is like Punk IPA 5AM Saint all of these sorts of things but for me the Amplified series is really where Brewdog shine that's the likes of Dogma Tokyo Star Jack Hammer I think Riptide's in there as well. There's a whole host of those amplified beers which are very, very good. But they've got quite a few regular appearances as well from IPA is Dead. This is the series that they, they do every year. They release a four pack of beers 
which are single hopped IPAs, the same malt base in all of them, and really it's just to teach the beer drinker about the different varieties of hops you can use. They also have the Paradox series, which is a different series of Imperial Stouts. They age them in different types of barrels from different whiskey distilleries. They also have the Abstract series, which is quite interesting, and they also have the Hello My Name Is series, which is a, a series of fruit infused IPAs. They usually release one of those a year, and they tend to be really quite interesting too. So just keep an eye out for those. Lots of interesting things going on at Brewdog. But anyway, Let's get on with this beer now. That's enough about Brewdog. So the 2015 series of IPAs Dead included the Chinook Hop from the USA, the Pioneer from England. Those are the two I've reviewed for you already. This one here, which is the Ella from Australia, and there was the Mandarina Bavaria, which was an experimental hop from Germany. Unfortunately, like I said, I can't review that one for you. But as always, I'll just give you a little read of the blurb on this one. This one says, IPA is Dead Ella. We felt it was time that hops went solo and got their own prime time show. IPA is Dead showcases four killer hop varieties to create four radically different single hop IPAs. Each IPA contains the same malt backbone and is brewed to be 75 IBUs and it's enthusiastically kettle hopped and dry hopped with one of our favourite hops. IPA is dead strips back the complete the complex layers and exposes all of the beating heart of an IPA, the hops in all their transparent glory. Can you say you've ever experienced 100% hop awesomeness? IPA is dead is brewed and bottled to do just that. IPA is dead, long live IPA. Tells you a little bit about Brewdog on the side and it says here, this one is best before the 3rd of April 2016. And these, this is the first series of IPA is dead incidentally that have these new style Brewdog labels. I'm sh pretty sure that 2014 still had the old the old school ones. I'm actually starting to like the, the new style Brewdog labels. I didn't like them initially but they, they've kind of grown on me a little bit and you can see there's the standard Brewdog cap on this one. The colours on this one I think it was blue, green, orange on the Mandarina Bavaria and then you've got purple on this one and they do change the colours every year too. But this one is a 7.2% single hop IPA and it has a malt base of Maris Otter, Crystal and Caramel. So without further ado, let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here. So as you can see, a nice smoky opening on this one. You can see it's actually starting to bubble up just a little bit. But just to tell you a bit about the hop, the Ella hop was actually known as the Stella hop for a while and it was said that it was it actually pops a bit of a smaller punch than its half-sister, the Galaxy. And apparently the name of this hop was changed because Stella Artois threatened the, the breeders with legal action. So the, the kind of macro beer world trying to push their way around the craft world once again. But the hop was bred first in Victoria in, in southeastern Australia in 2001. And it was derived apparently from the Galaxy and the Spout top. I think the Spout might be a Czech hop, but I'm not sure about that. But it was first used for brewing trials in 2007 before it was made commercially available. So it's quite an interesting hop actually. And it's supposed to have a nice sort of fruity yet noble character to it. So I'm quite interested to see what this guy's all about. But as you can see, this beer has poured a really nice kind of bright yellowy amber colour. This I think it's a bit lighter than the other ones I reviewed for you before. But I'll just check how well you're seeing this on the camera but yeah as you can see a nice quite bright orangey yellow hop there's a little bit of sediment visible in this one a few particles just floating about some bigger ones just sitting at the bottom of the glass there's a few big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass of course and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there but it looks very very nice so let's give this beer a smell and see how we get on you can see the head is actually fading away to be just a very thin foamy layer on this but yeah as you would expect actually, this beer, the, the hop on this one is actually really quite fruity. I was expecting it to be a bit more noble when I read about what goes on in this one. But it really is quite fruity. There's nice sort of grapefruit and passion fruits in this one. There's a bit of orangey or maybe tangerine citrus coming out of this too. There's, I want to say there's some peaches in there too. It actually has quite a distinctive peach aroma. But grapefruit and passion fruit are definitely in there. The hop actually smells a little bit dusty, if I'm honest. But yeah, nice juicy oranges, a bit of tropical fruit. You can smell a bit of the noble character right enough though. You've got a little bit of floral character. It's not too much too aromatic if you like. It's more smooth and grassy. But as I say, you can definitely pick up some of the noble uh, elements if you like under the nice fruity character. But there's a bit of bready character underneath, exactly what you would expect. The malt base in this one are Maris Otter, Crystal and Caramalts, incidentally. 7.2% ABV, of course. 
but yeah, it smells really quite nice. As I always say, especially when it comes to the sort of educational series of beers that Brewdog do, you really should give them a bit of a smell and just try and take in all the things that come out of this one. But this smells like a really nice and quite fruity one, but it's supposed to have a bit of noble character as well, and you can pick that up. But a nice, slightly biscuity and bready malt base to this one. So without further ado, let's actually get stuck into this beer. So this is the Ella from the IPA is Dead 2015 range from Brewdog in Ellen in Scotland. Slange. That's quite interesting actually. It's on first taste it comes across as very light, but as I always say, sugar the beer around your mouth and just let the whole palate adjust to this one. Yeah. That's quite interesting. The fruity characters behind the very front curve of the tongue are quite interesting. There's a really quite unusual tropical fruit there. You can feel the, the orangey citrus in there. And there is a bit of a, a light grapefruit, but the peaches for me are actually coming out in this quite nicely. But it's a very unusual and quite watery peach flavour that's coming out in this. Not really getting the passion fruits that I was picking up in the aroma. Maybe it's a little bit of pineapple actually. There is, once you start to move into the aftertaste of this beer, you get that quite... There is quite a distinct, slightly juicy and smooth pineapple flavour on the on just behind that front curve of the tongue there. It's really nice. Mm. What's interesting about this one though is that underneath that fruity character, you really can detect these noble hops. The German noble hops, of course, of a very lightly earthy character, usually in the back of the palate, but they're lightly floral and quite grassy and smooth, and you can really pick that up around the edges of your palate there. Just a little tiny, tiny bit earthy. As you move forward, there's a little bit of floral aromaticity. On the front corners of the palate, you can feel a little bit of that kind of drying flavour, if you like, and then as you go around the front curve of the tongue, it actually comes across as really quite smooth, but it's very, very nice, actually. I really, this is maybe the best one in the series so far. I really enjoy the Chinook hop, but for me, this is the best kind of all-rounded hop. It's got a bit of fruitiness, a bit of grassy and floral character, and of course, the malts are in there too. This is probably the the best all-round hop of the, of the IPA's Dead series 2015. Nicely done. Hmm. yeah that's really nice in the middle of the palate of course you're picking up these nice kind of uh, fruity or not fruity sorry that nice bready character the fruits are coming out at the front but there's that nice light bready coating just across the middle of the tongue a little bit of cereal character there's a little bit of dryness there and there's some sweeter caramel as you go down the middle of the palate but overall this is a very very nice beer actually really quite enjoy this one. As I said, so far it's the best one from the IPA is Dead 2015. This hop is the best sort of all-rounder. The other two are sort of hops you would maybe use in combination but this could well be a very good hop for just a single hop beer. It's got a bit of everything, a bit of fruit, the nice German noble hop character in there as well which is quite quirky. Usually when you've got the big fruity hops they're a little bit piney and a little bit resinous and this one is just a bit more subtle than that so that's what makes it really quite interesting. I'm not sure how many different Australian hop varieties there are actually. I know there's two or three that are quite well known. I don't think I've heard of Ella but I really can't remember what the other quite famous one is actually. I maybe should have looked that up before doing the video but that's by the by. Mm. The main point is, of course, that Australia are starting to produce some really nice hops. There's very nice hops from New Zealand, of course, as well. Yeah. But it's good to see that there's more hop-producing regions popping up across the world. The Japanese will be getting in on it soon as well, and probably the Koreans, they're starting to get more into their craft beer as well. So it's good to see that from the other side of the world, which is really nice. Yeah. But anyway, in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, definitely mid-bodied, smooth carbonation as is typical with this series. A little bit oily. The the hoppy character on this is a little bit more than it was with the Pioneer. The Pioneer, remember, was very smooth and the Chinook was actually really quite dry. This is somewhere in the middle of those two. 
it's got a nice smooth drying character to it if you like there's a bit of dryness at the back of the palette as you come further forward it builds just a little bit but overall it's very smooth and there's a little bit of dryness just behind the front of the tongue too those nice juicy fruity characters in there are coming out quite nicely but there's not much in the way of a malty sweetness from this one i think the chinook beer was a little bit sweeter than this and the pioneer had a bit more sweetness than this as well this one's more bready you're getting a bit more of the bread out of this one than you are with the caramel i would say so this one if you were going to single hop it i would say a little bit more caramel but overall it's very nice and as i said this is probably the best all-round hop of this series so i think this may well be one of my first encounters with this hop but overall it's really quite nice so for those of you that are interested in home brewing this could be a very nice hop for you to experiment with it's really quite good mm. But yeah, if I was home brewing, I'd definitely give that a go if I wanted a really, really fruity beer. It's, it's very nice, and that German noble hop character that's in there is pretty interesting as well. But yeah, um, as always, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. It's been really cool to review another one from the IPA's Dead series. I'll try and write to Brewdog and see if I can get a hold of the Mandarina Bavaria one for you. I'm not too sure how likely that is, though. Unfortunately, like I said, that one smashed. It would have been cool to review that, though, because it is an experimental hop. But nonetheless, I hope you've enjoyed the IPA's Dead 2015 reviews I've done for you. I will do the 2016 series when it appears, too. I always like doing these ones. But I hope you've enjoyed the series nonetheless. I hope you've enjoyed this review too. For those of you that are home brewing, go and check out this hop. It's very nice and probably the best all-round one in this series so far. But I thank you once again for watching my beer reviews. If you have tried this beer yourself, let me know your own thoughts on it in the comment section below as always. Until the next review, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Go and check out the social media things and I'll catch you soon with my next beer review. And there are a few other Scottish reviews to come up for you very soon. So do stay tuned for those and I'll catch you soon with the next review and you'll see more Swedish reviews appearing very shortly. Slanger just now.